You know, it seems to me that there are very few experiments in organic chemistry that do not involve at least one filtration step. Students should know the different types of filtration and when best to use them. Let's check out the stage hands. Filtration of a suspension to remove insoluble solids is an important and fundamental technique of preparative chemistry. By allowing the liquid to pass through a porous barrier such as a filter paper, the solid will remain on the barrier and can be separated from the liquid. At times, gravity alone is sufficient to force the liquid through the porous barrier, but there are many bulky organic solids which filter too slowly and suction or vacuum is required to complete the filtration. Gravity or vacuum. Which method of filtration should you choose? This depends on what part of the mixture you want. If you want the liquid, for example, you would like to remove a drying agent, you should use gravity filtration. If you want the solid, say from a recrystallization, you should use vacuum filtration. To gravity filter, you will need a ring clamp, a glass filter funnel and a piece of filter paper, wash solvent, a glass rod, a receiving flask or filter flask to collect the filtrate, and of course, the mixture which you want to filter. You should not place the funnel directly into the filter flask without additional support. This bad practice causes cracking of the flask by the funnel stem and makes the assembly top-heavy and easy to knock over. So always support the filter funnel in a metal ring. It is important to use the correct size filter paper. Properly sized filter paper should stop just below the rim of the glass funnel. As a guide, use filter paper whose diameter is about one centimeter less than twice the diameter of the funnel. For example, a six centimeter diameter funnel uses a filter paper of 11 centimeters diameter. There are two ways to fold the paper, fluting or simple folding. Simple or regular folding is done by first folding in half, then in quarters, then tear a small corner off one quarter and open the paper this way. The tear allows air contact between the paper and the funnel. Attach the ring clamp to the support. Place the funnel and filter paper so that the stem of the funnel is in the receiving flask. Wet the filter paper with a little solvent. The mixture's liquid is carefully poured down a glass rod into the filter cone. Continue adding liquid to keep the funnel nearly full throughout the filtration. As the filtration ends, Rinse the solid on the filter paper with a small amount of fresh solvent and drain this wash solvent into the filtrate. This helps reduce losses of liquid adsorbed on the solid. A useful variation of gravity filtration is hot filtration, an especially important technique to use during recrystallizations to remove insoluble impurities from hot, saturated solutions of a solid. A clear, hot solution is needed, thus the aim of this technique is to complete the operation before the material starts to crystallize. Vacuum filtration is not suitable because the hot filtrate boils under the reduced pressure leading to premature crystallization. Thus, hot gravity filtration is used. Gravity filtration is faster using fluted filter paper because fluting decreases the area of contact between the paper and the funnel. Eventually, you will develop your own way of fluting filter paper, but I will demonstrate how I do it. It's kind of like origami. First, fold it in half, then in quarters, then eighths,
finally in sixteenths, remembering to alternate the folds like an accordion. To heart filter you will need a beaker, some solvent, a short stem funnel with a fluted filter paper, a filter flask, and a heat source such as a steam bath. Before doing a hot filtration, you need to preheat your equipment. Add a few milliliters of solvent to the Erlenmeyer filter flask. Place the rings on the flask and put this apparatus in the steam bath. Place a stemless funnel or powder funnel with a fluted filter paper on the flask. Cover it with a 600 milliliter beaker. Heat the flask in a steam bath so that the solvent boils gently. The hot vapor will keep the funnel hot and will wet the filter paper preventing crystallization in the funnel stem which may plug the funnel. Keep the bulk of the solution hot, pouring small amounts into the filter at a time. Be careful. When pouring hot solutions, use finger cuts or a technical clamp to help you hold the hot flask and prevent burning your hands. Vacuum filtration is used to recover solids because using suction is faster than gravity. The required equipment includes a thick-walled Buchner filter flask with a sidearm, a Buchner funnel, properly sized filter paper, an adapter, a filter trap, and the mixture to be filtered. The first step is to clamp the Buchner filter flask. In our labs, the filter trap apparatus contains a clamping system and the flask only needs to be attached to the heavy tubing. The vacuum source is a water aspirator. Water aspirators are made of glass, metal or plastic and work based on the Bernoulli effect. A constriction in the aspirator causes the water to change speed. The acceleration of the water causes a drop in pressure, creating the vacuum. An aspirator usually creates a vacuum of 20 to 30 torr. You should use a water trap between the aspirator and the apparatus. There is danger of water sucking back when a sudden drop in water pressure occurs, and this is a constant problem when working with water aspirators. The trap simply acts as a dead space between your flask and the aspirator. The trap should have a large volume as it fills up with water when water sucks back. To use the aspirator, turn the water on full. Using tubing, attach the aspirator to the trap. The trap has a stopcock for controlling vacuum. Check that the stopcock is open to the atmosphere. Two types of funnel are used in vacuum filtration, the Buchner and the Hirsch funnels. Both funnels contain a flat, perforated disc or filter disc at the bottom. Generally, the Buchner funnel is used, but Hirsch funnels are better for collecting small amounts of solids. Place the funnel on top of the filter flask, putting the stem through the adapter. Cover the filter disc with a piece of filter paper. Always use a filter paper of the correct diameter. If the paper is too large, simply trim it to size using scissors to ensure a good seal. First, wet the filter paper with a little solvent, the same solvent that is used in the mixture that is about to be filtered. Apply the vacuum by partially closing the stopcock on the water trap to the atmosphere in order to suck the dampened paper down flat over the filtered disc. Add the filtration mixture in portions onto the center of the filter paper. Then close the stopcock to apply full vacuum. Add more mixture to the funnel, keeping it nearly full throughout the procedure. 
Stir and swirl the filtration mixture in the flask near the end of the filtration to get most of the solid onto the filter. When all the liquid has been sucked through, release the vacuum by opening the stopcock on the trap to the air. This prevents suck back and stops your trap from filling with water. Wash the collected solid with a little cold, clean solvent and reapply gentle suction by partially closing the stopcock on the trap. When the liquid passes through the solid slowly, the crystals are washed effectively. Once the solid has filtered, continue the suction with the stopcock fully closed for a few extra minutes to dry the solid. If the solvent was water, you may want to press the solid flat onto the filter plate. After completion of the vacuum filtration, always release the vacuum and disconnect the tubing from the filter flask before turning off the water aspirator. Run the tip of a flat-bladed spatula around the outside of the filter paper to dislodge the filter cake. Carefully invert the funnel over a watch glass or paper to remove the filter cake. Scrape the paper clean with the spatula and set the solid aside to dry. Three types of filtration were shown. Remember, if you want the liquid, use gravity filtration. To remove solid impurities during recrystallization, use hot filtration. And if you want the solid, use vacuum filtration.